from Intersolar Middle East 2016 from Dubai. And we are now with uh, one of the cleantech solar ladies, with Mary O'Donnell, who is president and founder of uh, No Fossil Fuel. Fuel. Yes, so, so what does it mean actually? <laughs> no fossil fuel. What does it mean? Just what it says. No fossil fuel and also Clean Power Inc., two different companies, uh, basically all in the renewable energy business. So, Mary, uh, I saw some movie um, on the internet with uh, nice windmills and the green farm. So, are you, let's say, a green maniac? <laughs> I'm a green junkie. Could you tell us a bit more about your history with the green energies and uh, how come uh, you came here to Dubai? I came here to Dubai because this is where the money is and the investors are because I am strongly committed to, for the rest of my life, which I hope I have a lot, but I don't think so, seeing that I'm 70 years old, to get built as many gigawatts of clean, renewable energy that I'm possible is possible for me to do. But the first part of the question, so how come you became a green woman? Okay, I became a green woman because um, the real estate business had come to a crash and somebody had stiffed me for two and a half million dollars that I had to pay a mortgage for, pay off his mortgage. And there was n no business to do my sustainable village development that I was doing. So I said, what next? And it made sense. The town had just done a big study on wind. And I said, what a great idea that is. Well, if it's good for the town, it's good for me. So I went to town meeting. They gave it to me. So I built six megawatts of wind on my land. And of course, got sued by the neighbors. But I said, maybe solar will be easier because I really believe in this whole renewable energy and makes so much sense and no fossil fuel. So then I started building solar and I was selling those and the state uh, stopped that program or they really reduced the program. And I said, that doesn't make any sense to me. And we need more of it, not less of it. So I started looking around and my buddy, Michael Bellner, uh, really helped me with my first kind of connections internationally and so just one thing led to another and my background is commercial real estate brokerage and development so bottom line these are just real estate deals better so it was pretty easy for me to to do it so now we're in Africa in the Philippines in Japan pretty much everywhere everywhere Actually, uh, if you could compare your real estate business yes, from the past with your new business in uh, wind energy and solar energy, so how do you compare these businesses? And how would you like to use your experience from the past in order to make solar and wind more affordable and you know, to spread around the globe? So clean power is even better because and we need more of it and so we need to replace this power, instead of using fossil fuel, to use clean, clean power, which is what we're doing. And what are your plans in the solar, but also in all the clean tech businesses? What I'm doing is I'm finding shovel-ready projects around the world, although somebody in the business said, there's no such thing as shovel-ready, don't ever say that. So I'm saying as close to shovel-ready as possible, and my team does something I think is very unique, because we actually, because of our background in the a real estate business which a lot of it is just the land making sure you have the right site is 99 percent of it and the right interconnection so it once again the site so then we have a, some very experience in, in a battery in numbers scrubbing so we do really all the due diligence that a developer or a buyer would have to do we have already done for them not that they don't do it again, but when we give them a project, it's really ready to make a decision for them. It makes it much easier. So actually, you are like uh, looking at the different projects and you are, let's say, counseling, deleting from the portfolio all the spam projects. Yeah. <laughs> we throw away more projects than we keep. So it makes it easier. So when we bring a project to a, 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 the ultimate buyer user, it's a, it's, a, it's a good project that we don't bring it. 
So the real question is, do they actually want to be in that market? Everything else is really done for them, which is nice. So um, if you could tell us, you know, which is the top uh, list of five projects that you have right now on sale? Well, I just got back last week from Kazakhstan. It's a 300 megawatt project that I'm really crazy about because so many reasons. The site abuts the power station, uh, the substation, the, um, the laws of the country are very uh, conducive. It's a feed-in tariff. It's a country that really is uh, committed to making clean energy. Just passed the final law that says that if, if inflation last year was very high, so this year we take what the inflation was last year and we add it on. So no one gets stuck. So it's just, they've done a really good job. I think it was a main issue, yes, in Kazakhstan, that the feed-in tariff was, you know, just based on the local currency, yes, and there is a big inflation, inflation in the country. So that was a problem, but they fixed it. Oh. So it's not, a, it's not a, a difficult if there's a problem in a country, as long as the country is aware of it, they're committed to renewable energy, and they do something about it. So, and they've been, they're very pro, so that's important. So that's one of the first things. We've been in the Philippines, which has been a little challenging, but these, uh, a lot of it's, it's 138 megawatts of wind that uh, does in fact still have a feed-in tariff, so that's very good. Uh, some new, very interesting stuff coming up in Africa, and of course India, the big uh, hot spot is India. So yeah, I would say those are probably of the countries. Those are our, at this present time, but every day is a new day in renewable energy, which is really wonderful. So Mary, you were like at the beginning, like a windy woman, yeah? Maybe it's also your hair, which is a bit windy today. <laughs> but uh, now I, I, I know that you would like to become a solar woman, actually, yes? Is it a, a future for Mary O'Donnell to be a solar woman, actually? Oh, come on, 99% of our deals are, are solar now. Wind is very difficult to permit, and solar has come so far so quickly. So, yeah, no, we're mainly a solar company, although I always have wind in my heart. But listen, if it's renewable, it's sustainable, it's clean, I'm all over it. And that was the final statement of uh, before the windy Mary O'Donnell, and now to, uh, a solar woman, solar business woman who joined us here in Dubai at InterSolar Middle East. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you.